What happened here? Right, hello there. So right now the subreddit and fodder is in chaos, but how did we come to this point? Well before we get to that, we need to do the other half of this video. I'm talk about talk about Foxwell's history of problematic balance, and for that, we must go back in time to the introduction of asymmetry. Both arms to raise. Vehicle variants are added to both factions. However, Rollins got the far better end of the stick with the M1A1 A1 Abrams and Silverhand, which resulted in a long win streak and a bad time for the Colonials. The following updates Rollins would be nerfed, and Colonials received much more powerful equipment like the original LTD and the MHG, which changed the favour to them. With 471, further asymmetry would be introduced, with the Colonials receiving the MPT and ISG, which originally didn't have AT re uh, retaliation and only costed BMATs. Warrens couldn't deal with the MPT spam as foreign vehicles were inferior at the time, and whilst the ISG was nerfed, the damage it had dealt to the community had remained, with many believing the deaths were biased towards the Colonials. This was only made worse when the Wardens received the original HTD, which was useless at the time, and Colonials of Spartha, adding just more fuel to the fire. All of this eventually resulted in the Warden exodus of 476 to 79, in which the game only stayed alive thanks to the influx of new players at the time. During the late 70s and early 80s so, Wardens received multiple pieces of equipment to make the game more balanced and multiple changes were made, and these did work. For a while the game was the most balanced it had ever been, however in update 48 it began to, began to change, with multiple changes being made that benefited the Wardens heavily. What could be seen as just a repeat of what happened to the Colonials in the 60s and 70s. Over the past months, a visible build-up of anger over the many issues Colonials faced could be seen and with multiple decisions and announcements of 1.0 such as the lack of a cutler equivalent, superior Warden vehicles, ATAC buffs and nurse and buff, state of 75mm, and stuff of facilities is only gotten worse. The streamer and YouTuber MoiDog is also versed in the situation somewhat and is often blamed for update 48. What pushed over the edge though is how fast the devs responded to the Ruptura being a bit too powerful in the dev bunch feedback. Within a few hours, the devs quickly responded to this and nerfed it so he heavily to a point of uselessness, and whilst the devs did apologize and admit they messed up and would relook at it, the damage had been dealt. Whilst Colonials had complained about the heavy fuel cannon and cutler for months, this was only dealt with in a couple of hours, and this trip was the trigger of months of anger many had felt, and it has resulted in a volatile outburst we see now. It's hard to say what will happen next, as many are still hyped for the update, even though many aren't. Not to mention those same people might actually stop playing after 96 or 97 after they experience it. It's possible we'll have a number of exodus like that in the 70s, which will have disastrous effects with the new facility changes and how vehicles now work. It would lock away a lot of late game stuff for Colonials, as well as some, even some basic vehicle variants. However, we could also just see a slight reduction in players. I think there will be an exodus after War 96, with how much it is repeating itself right now, but we won't know until it happens. Oh well, don't happen actually. I hope this has helped, and if I've made any mistakes, please mention it in the comments as I'm sure I have. But I hope one of the main things people take away from this is that the devs aren't biased, it's just that they're not too good at balancing and dealing with problems, as seen with the heavy field cannon. Anyway, thanks for watching and goodbye.